Hey, Kyriakos, nice to see you. Hey, Nick. I've been hearing a lot of good things about the Relic Instruments uh, Relic, and I didn't realise quite how big it was. It's very impressive. Yeah, we heard recently from uh, one of the first users that got it that it's a human-sized sequencer, and we really like that phrase. Uh, yeah. It is big, but it's very comfortable. Yeah, so t tell me about it. I mean, this is uh, very impressive. Of course. So we call it a, con a hybrid control surface because it comes together with this breakout mode right here. We have 16 analog audio inputs. This can do line level, Euro rack level, or control voltage, and 16 audio outputs. Those are for the matrix and the mixer functionality of Relic. Then we have 32 control voltage outs, 16 gates, one clock out and one reset out. Right. And the breakout module connects with a simple USB-C cable on the back of Relic, where we also have three MIDI outs, one MIDI in, uh, USB MIDI and USB host. So it's essentially it's a dedicated hardware sequencer. Yes, platform. It's right. A hardware sequencer and a matrix mixer and a DAW controller in the same time. That's why we call it hybrid. So you can use it in standalone to sequence fully. Right. I'm guessing. I mean, I I'm not going to do the maths, but how many steps does that represent? Or does that represent 16 uh, steps of 16 track? steps, but the maximum uh, pattern length is 1,024 bars. Wow. Okay. Uh, but the first page is before we even enter the sequencer part is the matrix. What I can do here is that I see on the screen all of the module inputs that I have connected and on the module outputs. And then if I want to connect an input to an output, I just select the input with the encoder and then I send it to this output. Or I can go and do that directly from the pads right here. So now I connect it like a, a sine wave to a spring reverb and the spring reverb to the output. I can go to the mixer and attenuate my input or my output, either from the virtual faders or with the encoders. And I can switch between different um, uh, the inputs or the outputs right here. Wow. And if I like what I hear, I can copy and paste it, and I can connect a different uh, uh, connection. So this is a different wafer. And I can do the same. For so the, these are all external audio uh, yes. sources, right? Okay. This is the equivalent as me changing the cables on the Eurorack. Right. But what I can do now is that I can play with this. Like it was sort of an instrument. So I'm changing the connections right now in real time. I can do right. this either by hand, there is no audio clicks or artifacts, or I can go on the sequencer page, and my last track right here is, we call this a matrix sequencer. It's like a normal sequencer track, but instead of uh, sequencing pins and velocity, it sequences the matrix. sequences the matrix, yes, exactly. So wow. that's not the okay. best sound. So just, out, just outside of the, uh, I'm just uh, having a slight head explode moment. So <laughs> even without the sequencer, mm. we're talking about something that is a patch matrix for modular signals, so you can because you set the attenuation. Do they do a uh, uh, um, attenuation, or is it uh, not yet? But uh, this is something that we are keeping on the bank of our minds. Uh, wow! Uh, but it's not dedicated to Eurorack. I mean, the breakout module looks like it because of the footprint, but it can also do line level, and we see a lot of people actually recently using it for effects change. So they're passing their synthesizer through multiple effects, and they're using the matrix uh, sequencer to change the effects rack wow. per step. Then on the sequencer page, we also have 16 normal sequencer tracks on top of uh, the matrix sequencer. Every track can have up to eight voices of polyphony. Right. Uh, we can send any track to any MIDI out, USB MIDI or control voltage output. Uh, it can accept any MIDI in. It can have a maximum pattern length of 1,024 bars. We call right. those seats because we don't want to get confused with different signatures. There are different types like step and Euclidean. There is a speed multiplier, so you can go eight times faster or eight times slower, and then in this mode right now, I see all the tracks together. And as you guessed before, this is 16 steps. This is 16 16. So I can go and enter three steps right here. If I want to edit something quickly, I can parameter lock and change, let's say, the pitch right now or the velocity on any of the other parameters. So, so now we're still listening to the matrix uh, mixer. So let's stop that and listen only the digital that I'm sequencing here. This is the outside view mode, but if I want, I can zoom in and I can enter steps in between the 16s. Oh, why? Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I can do ratchets, I can do more complicated sequences. But this is still the overview. If I want more detail, I can enter the piano roll view, where I see a piano roll on the screen, and then right on the pads, I see the equivalent notes. If I want to add a G here, I can just go and add one G here, or if I want to do a tight note, I press and hold, and then 
I see. And if you put more than one note on that step, you would get a chord, a I chord. guess. If it's and then you can parameter lock the chord. So if I want the first voice of the chord to have a different velocity or a different probability than the first, I can just go here and change this voice of the chord only. Wow, okay, right. I mean, this it's really... Uh, so you've essentially, it's almost like a DAW, hardware DAW, because it gives you that level of granularity. I mean, wow, okay. <laughs> so we, like, we're thinking a lot of how we can have a lot of options in our hands very quickly, but in the same time provide a lot of depth. We want to so sketch ideas quickly, but then spend time to refine them. Uh, yeah. If we need to. And there is also the same piano roll for velocity. Now we see faders on the step, so I can change the velocity of each step quickly, or I can draw probability distribution straight on the pads, or use the encoders to change the probability of each step. Uh, same for trigger, micro timing, and lastly, automation, which came on the first update of Relic. Every track has uh, eight voices, eight lanes of automation. Right. And if I want, I can draw very quickly uh, an automation line here, and then I can interpolate, so I can have a very smooth line. Yeah. This is now controlling, I think, a delay on the digitone. Everything I do on this mode, it's being stored in a clip. And every track can have up, uh, up to 128 clips. So if I like what I did here, I can copy this track and paste it, uh, copy this clip and paste it here. And then I can set follow-up actions. So I can say, play this for four bars. Okay, so I mean, it's, I, you know, I can see where some of the inspiration is coming from. And it makes <laughs> sort of hardware embodiment. So what's it underneath the hood? I mean, is it a powerful CPU or are you having... It's a complicated uh, architecture. So it has multiple CPUs depending right. on which thing we want to control. Of course, we have a very large screen, so we need something which is very powerful yes. in graphics. But at the same time, we're dealing a lot with very robust timing. We need to be really on spot. So high resolution. So it's high resolution on the one hand, real time, but non order in the same time. It's a, it's a complicated uh, architecture in the background that took us quite a few years to... Wow, OK. Point. So, I mean, this... You can buy it. It's in the world now. You can buy it now, right? The first units have been shipped last month, and we're still fulfilling uh, pre-orders. But the first people already have it in their hands, and it's very and exciting. And so, what, what's the uh, at what price point? Because I have no. Uh, what, how much does it cost? The MSRP is one thousand six hundred euros, including the breakout module. Right. Okay. Uh, but for that, you've got. I mean, you've got audio routing. Have you got DSP on board that you can add effects or anything like that? Or mix no DSP it? On, on board. All the matrix part is fully analog, so there is nothing that comes and process digitally from the matrix. So you can you, you can you can you merge or you can you can you blend tracks into one act, inputs into one output or yes. you can, so you can you can split and you can also sum. You can also mix uh, inputs and outputs together. Wow. Okay. So you'd have some. Okay. Uh, interesting. And is that the maximum number of I.O. it will handle? How, how many ins and outs does it have? Right now, this has 16 inputs, 16 outputs. And there is a possibility in the future to expand and connect multiple breakout boxes uh, together. So daisy chain, right? Yes. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really nice to see it like uh, the full product for the first time, the full instrument for the first yeah. time uh, here in Superbooth. So um, when's the next batch available? I expect people will be asking. <laughs> uh, this is a very good question, and uh, production took a very long time on the, for the first batch, so we don't want to overpromise something. But conservatively, we expect that the next small batch will be available in the end of the summer. Yeah. But first, we're focusing on fulfilling all the pre-orders right yeah. now. So have you, is the next stage to kind of turn it into something that you can produce in higher volumes? We are investigating that right now, yes. Right. At the moment, we do smaller volumes because we want to have full control over the product quality. So we go ourselves and we take every single detail before we ship. If we find a way to scale it, we might do it in the future. But at the moment, we insist on having more control over the manufacturing process. And I guess, can you, control, can you record into it from an external MIDI source if you wanted to, like via of a course, keyboard? Right. Yes. There is also a keyboard mode right on the device. It can be on key or isomorphic. We have different scales. You can uh, quantize notes on recording. There is an overdub uh, function. And the last uh, 128 parts here, it's a mod wheel or a velocity uh, setting that you can change um, in real time. And also, I suppose with such a large sort of matrix of pads, pad, you, you can section things up. You can do all sorts of really interesting kind of Exactly. Yeah. There is a lot of potential. And uh, right now that production is finally settling in, we want to focus a lot on what is the next step how, how else we can bring this more forward, make it easier to use in the same time, but also a lot uh, more detailed on what people can do with it. Excellent. And I suppose also, I mean, you could script it to control 
complex software instruments and all well, kinds of stuff. Yeah. This is actually already here. So we have this page called DAW. It's right now connected on this machine. So right now, whatever you see in Ableton Live, you also see it on the screen of Relic. Ah, OK. You can trigger clips. You can record, enable, and disable. And today, we're showing for the first time using, which is a protocol we developed together with Siemens Tonic for a very long time now. And it's very simple. It's a USB-C cable that provides audio level, sample level uh, synchronicity between DAW and hardware. So when you press play in live, uh, Relic will follow on very, very precise timing. Wow, that's really interesting. Fantastic. So uh, I guess there's a waiting list. People go to the website to just kind of uh, say, I want one, right? Yeah, of course. You, we have a waiting list right now on the website. So everybody interested, they can join the waiting list. And then as long as we have more news, we're going to let uh, everyone know. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's really nice to see you.